Okay, good afternoon, everybody. It is Tuesday, August 22nd, 2023, 5.30 p.m. This is the Community Redevelopment Agency regular meeting. Clerk, Alora, can I please have a call to order? June 13th meeting to approve two work orders with Calvin Giordano. 
And one of them is for the visioning process for West First Avenue, and the other is for uh, branding signage for the CRA. Uh, and uh, it's certainly to be coordinated with the city uh, wayfinding signage program as well. Um, and as an attestment to your program tonight, I have provided a schedule that's being proposed by Calvin Giordano. They have mapped out their uh, milestones to get us to what they call an adoption of their ideas and street space concepts for West First Avenue that is terminated for a, or, or I guess, uh, scheduled for an adoption in front of you on February 14th. A critical piece of this is to begin the workshop that are planned in the, in the program. And um, they have proposed some dates. I have kind of reminded them that some of their dates aren't feasible, such as September 4th being on a holiday. So I want to make sure that we accommodate your schedule as best as possible. And I'm hoping that maybe uh, you could identify a, um, a prospective date for September that you could have, uh, that we could do the uh, CRA board workshop for the visioning process. And I sent you an email uh, last week kind of to give you some thought, uh, advance notice uh, of this question. So if we could come to some kind of idea, we can start these workshops. Does the commission have any available dates between September 4th and September 18th? You know, September 4th is obviously Labor Day. Right. September, September 12th is your normally scheduled CRA meeting, but you may recall that last month we postponed it to September 13th so that it falls on uh, the same date as your budget hearing. So right now, September 12th is an open day for you. Uh, I would suggest uh, sometimes like early evening, like 5 to 7, something like that, so we can catch perhaps some business people as they're leaving their, their work, uh, as well as accommodate people who would come to the, the workshop after work. I, I would suggest at least a two hour. I don't know if it's necessary to schedule for two and a half. The 12th, what would you mean for? You're looking, you're looking at the 12th and the 13th. We have CRA meetings on the 12th and the commission meetings on the 13th. Do we not say that they have both on the same day? We do. Both, both on the okay. same day. Okay. 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 So it's both on the 13th. That's correct. Yeah, I know. It's, it's not the same. Okay. So then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm assuming that we could probably just do it on the 12th. Is that what you were saying, Sam? Yeah, I would say the 12th. The easiest since most of our meetings are on Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. We got to have you yeah. We have to the 18th. Everybody else here at the 14th. I'm okay on the 14th also. No, I'm not. What about the 18th? What about Monday? I'm free to 18th. That's the 11th. That's the 11th? Okay. 
Who has the most complex schedule? Okay. Mm-hmm. When are you available? The 13th is out of the question because yeah, we have yeah. the full schedule. Mm-hmm. <coughs> the 18th, no good to see you like this. Because I think everybody should be at least. Don't be limited by their suggestions. Whatever you come up with, I'll try to get them to accept.
Uh, based on that information, the NCO thought that if we were able to get our submission in, that we would probably rank fairly high in the process. So we'll see where it is, but I just needed to let you know this is something that was moving. I needed to take the discretionary authority, but I wanted to keep you in, a, in the loop. <clears throat> uh, Saturday, we had a big event with Rebuilding Together. We had uh, uh, this event was kind of uh, co-sponsored with Memorial Healthcare. They signed up 60 zero volunteers to work with Rebuilding Together, and we did three homes, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> three homes on Southwest 4th Street. Um, unfortunately, the day was a little bit wet. <laughs> uh, the rain actually started about 7.30 in the morning. I was uh, pleasantly surprised when it seemed to stop uh, completely right about 8.30, which was the start time for the, uh, for the cleanup work. Unfortunately, it's kind of overcast and wet for the rest of the day. It was a bad day to apply paint to a house. So what they did was uh, they did do the landscaping of the three houses that were planned. And then while they were there, one of the neighbors looked out, saw what was going on, and got them to do the landscaping on a fourth house on the same block. Uh, so uh, what happens in an event like that is that rebuilding together will double back sometime later this week on a dry day and do the painting uh, to complete that process. Uh, with, with these houses, uh, rebuilding together, working with the CRA, now has uh, rehabbed about 150 houses in Dania Beach. Uh, I can also recognize uh, Commissioner Davis and Commissioner James. Uh, they were part of the work crew, volunteer crew, that came in Saturday morning as well. Uh, for the patch, I wanted to let you know that it is a very big subject that is kind of taking off here. Um, there is a lot of due diligence that needs to be done for the comparative, uh, uh, the comparison for you between the two potential sites. Uh, I have ordered appraisals, I have ordered surveys, topographical surveys, uh, uh, soil testing, uh, everything I can to give you a fact-based uh, analysis. Of the, there will be a fair comparison of the two properties. I believe this is not going to be a slam dunk conclusion. So the more facts you have to make the decision on, I think the better position you'll feel in. I hope to have this to you next month. Uh, here. So board member Salino, thank you. Uh, I expressed my opinion on the on the patch last time, and I've been doing a lot of thinking. Uh, you know, since we had this meeting six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. And, um, you know, our community, I think involvement would be, um, of, you know, things involved in the city to make the patch a better place or something. You know, I'm still pretty uh, adamant about wanting to move the patch to a place where we can't develop. But I think, you know, in the process of doing this, just to bring it to the commission and find out how, I, how it may help us or maybe change your minds or things like that, I think that if we, if we do decide to sell that land over there, I think that developer um, that would build, you know, workforce housing there would be required to build a new patch. That would be part of his requirement. He would have to put the, uh, all of the uh, funding in, the irrigation systems. The, the, I mean, present the patch as a turnkey operation. Uh, if, if we had that, if that was a possibility, and we could get a developer to, to do the, the, the workforce housing mm -hmm. and get the land over there to build patch on, we would not put a dollar out of our pocket if that, if that would work. And I'm almost positive that um, there, there are somebody out there that would do that. But it's something for you to think about why you're getting your, um, why you're getting your um, appraisals and so on. And in the meantime, let everybody can think about it. Because that may be like a little incentive to the pie if we can get something like that. Because then we don't have to think about it. Just put 100000 or 100000 into that property from our, our city money or the developer would do it. I, somebody told me a while back that we should do our, our developers would pay for a lot of things, and I think that that may be um, 
a way to do that. But that's just a thought I wanted uh, to give to uh, give the board for you to think about and uh, while we're doing it. So, thank you. Thank you, board member Salvino. Awesome I, idea. I can also tell you I had met with Eric of uh, Parks and Rec uh, to talk about how there might be some joint use in either or both sites, uh, so there could be some public access land as well that would go with that. And in fact, interestingly enough, our lead coordinator has laid out a conceptual plan for the Sterling Road site, and her plan includes a walking trail for Parks and Rec as well as a boat launch on the canal. So I'm really looking forward to bringing the idea to you, but I, I need some facts and figures to, to back it up. Thank you. Uh, before you move on, uh, Board Member Davis? Well, I will wait until you have all the, the information together. I, but I did go by that site um, and looked at it closely. There is a nuclear smell over there by that canal. Um, I am concerned that it is not a residential area. It's not a walkable community part anywhere people is. Right now, the residents can walk to it. The school kids can walk to it. The, um, the elderly from the Saratoga community can walk to it, and that's part of the research that I have uh, about the community garden, that it does bring that social element to the community and that cohesiveness. So I won't go into the whole detail of what I was able to find out, but I am concerned uh, that that community element um, that is currently at the patch would not be there in this new location uh, and, and along with the schools that, that there, I don't know how you ever get rid of that canal smell. So um, I, I would be interested in seeing everything brought back, and then at that time I will go into the details of, of what I've researched as well. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Davis. Thank you. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, just to uh, end it to let you know that uh, our arts and seafood celebration, uh, a number of the collateral materials designed for that event have been submitted to the, um, for a sensational award. I have been advised that we have won in several categories, and in your uh, report, uh, the, the materials that we have submitted is the promotional mailer, promotional poster, commemorative poster, program and event guide, Tickets. Our tickets are capable of this piece space in themselves, uh, the website, and the event t-shirt. I've been advised that we have won in several of those categories, but uh, the, um, uh, the events um, group will not advance notice me as to what we have won. Their meeting is as we speak now, and they're making the awards. <laughs> so next month I'll be able to tell you what it is that we won. Um, as a close to my admin report, I want to draw your attention. At your data seat, I've included a blue folder. I have been talking to you for some time about print materials that the CRA has been working on to provide information to potential investors, company negotiations, and so forth. Uh, I have finally gotten several of these materials to the point of being able to be printed. This is the start of our print materials. And this is the kind of material that we'll provide, uh, provide as we meet companies that are coming to meet us here, whether the developers or investors, as well as, uh, as Bill makes his Bravo visits. He'll take these and provide them to our local businesses. Uh, this kind of information provides is so valuable in so many ways. So, for instance, to our local businesses, it will help them identify whether there's opportunities for them to target new customers. Uh, I have provided this kind of information to some of our building owners, like Dakota, and they use this information to design their marketing so that uh, they can attract out-of-state tenants to their buildings. So this has a lot of value and a lot of use to different ways that we can represent our city and I want you to see what we've gotten started. I can tell you this is just the start. There's probably about eight or ten more pieces that will be coming to this as I'm able to get them designed for print. And that concludes my editing report. 
for the magenta. Yes, um, just two things, of, just two of the materials. Uh, for this one, is this is how it's going to look when it goes to print? That is actually an insert from a magazine. Um, yeah, in fact, in the front end of your folder, there's a lifestyle magazine. That's the 2022 edition. That print you just held up is our insert for the 2023 edition when it's published. Okay, and then yeah. The so it looks a little bit odd as a standalone, but I want to make sure that people have a chance to see it. Okay, and then the only other thing, um, could we add our if we was if we were to do this again, could we add our logo? I see we have like FIU, U.S. Department of Energy, um, the EPA, but we don't have our ERA logo, and we don't have it on this either. No, okay. They're in here. The magazine in there. If you reprint these, could you just make sure we have our CRA logo on it? What a great observation. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Move on to the consent agenda. I have a motion from Board Member Salvino to pass the consent agenda. Uh, second from Vice Mayor Llewellyn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unopposed. Do we have any proposals in bids? I don't see any on the docket. Uh, for discussion and possible action, we have item 7.1, commercial charge grant application for 50 East Dana Beach Boulevard. Thank you, Chair. Um, there is a brief memo that was added to your package, and uh, basically this is for the building that is diagonally across the street from us. Uh, it is uh, a small restaurant building. They're trying to position themselves to better serve the new residents coming to the select. Uh, it's pretty simple. It is a uh, it's replacement of windows and doors and so forth. It is a building that's owned by Joshua Codner. Uh, he has, we have his application. We have photos of the existing building. And we have uh, two uh, construction estimates uh, that's included in the package. Our recommendation is that we approve this uh, for uh, a maximum of $19,625 for 50% of the actual cost as evidenced by the receipt. This is a typical uh, facade grant application. Any discussion? Uh, board Member Jane? I just want to make a motion to approve it. I'm kind of disappointed that it's no longer a restaurant. Um, it's been a restaurant since I've been a little girl. It's too bleak. And now it's too sad. But uh, um, outside of the other discussion that we have, I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion. I, I just, I just want to, they've already painted it. So I don't, I mean, it, it, again, we, <laughs> it's another business that feels like they're doing things without getting the approval. Okay. Yeah, isn't the facade different, though? Cause it's, Maybe. It's based on the face the facade yeah, that we're doing it. Maybe, yeah. Oh, well, let, let me clarify. The facade grant application is just for the cost of the windows and doors, it's not for the painting. Okay. And they'll pay for retroactive work. Okay. 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 That's great. Okay, so that uh, building is um, right across the street from the Sweats. Well, I thought somebody was going to do something with that. They're going to leave that as a small. I think it returns to an art gallery. Well, yeah, that's the owner. That's what he's doing to it. I know this owner owns a few things. Yeah, but they've been around. They're dating a long time. I just, I just amazed that somebody would, uh, you know, that would stay there like that with all that bigger stone plaque behind it. Uh, it's something they need more uh, improved in besides the glass and, uh, you know, make it look a little bit more. Uh, no, I know. Well, thanks, Lori, for sharing that with me. I'm pretty aware you have to go push somebody. Is, is what they have there considered art? Because it doesn't just look like a paint job. It looks like some form of art. So I just want to 
and it is already painted or whatever it's done there, but it, it's like a red textured, checkered right. type of something. I don't know. It don't look like somebody just painted it, so I just want to make sure <coughs> that we're not having another business that has been going to ask for forgiveness because I'm not going to be forgiven this time. I think you have the artboard board look at it, right? Yeah, that's the proper step. Yeah. Right. It, it, it's positive to see someone using the facade prayer. You know what? Uh, since Director Chen, when's the last time we even had anybody use the facade prayer? Uh, our last one was it's, uh, uh, several uh, months ago, what, three years ago or something? Yeah. That was last year. The ornamental iron. You approved that facade grant for them about. Uh, I'm taking it about four to five months ago. Okay, great. All right, looks like see a business take advantage of this. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion? All right, I have a motion from Board Member James, and I have a second. I'm done. Right. I'm done. You guys aren't listening to me any other way, honestly. It wouldn't matter. I had, a, I had a motion from Board Member James and I had a second from Board Member Davis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. I just have it. It's been passed. Okay. Now on the Board Member comments. We have plenty of time for you to speak. Um, board Member Salvino. I you go first. But we'll start with, um, no, we'll start with Board <laughs> Member Davis first. Please, if you could. Yes, um, I just want to say that I did have a wonderful time, even though through the rain in the morning it did stop uh, for the community event with the Building Together Home Depot and uh, the memorial work with the volunteers. It was really, um, you know, it was like a team building event, and the homeowners who came out, they were so excited and so elated that their properties were getting worked on, and I'm glad to see that it spilled over to a fourth. Uh, person, and so I just think that it's really great to keep these kinds of events going and keep, keep us in the loop because it really kind of brings the entire community together. So thank you for including us in that, and I hope to be a part of many more in the future. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Board Member James, please. <laughs> now, um, I too went to Wanda Armstrong, who's just the resident that I was able to mm -hmm, go and um, take a photo with and communicate with, and she was very excited. She said she had been trying for a few years to get on the list and um, that they would come back and paint our home. Um, and so it's good to be out there, although it was very hot. Um, God bless everyone who's doing the Lord's work and keep painting and landscaping and doing all that good stuff. But uh, I'm very excited to continue to have this program because it definitely enhances the quality of life and, and, and just caring about your property. And, and I think it's provided a, a much-needed facelift to not only those homes, but the homes that surround it um, want to take more pride in their homes as well um, because they see other homes uh, being in here. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member James. Board Member Salvino. Well, thank you. Um, I'm going to finish what I started now with my commissioner's comments. You know, I, on the facade grants, I'm all for that. It was, it was, my question really wasn't whether we spend uh, $19,000 on it or not. It would be nice though, if we knew what we were spending it on. And I mean, what kind of, what kind of business, what kind of, I mean, what happens if he opens up something that's not appealing to the, the area? Of, of why would we support it? And I, I just thought with, with the presentation of asking for $19,000, I'd like to know what's going in the building. What's it going to be like? What's going, what part is it going to serve the community? Is it serving itself? Is it going to be online sales? And these are questions I think we should be asking before we spend $19,000 on the facade grant. And we didn't have those answers, and that was my question. But um, so, you know, anyhow, that's uh, pretty much my comment. But so, Next time, I think, before we present a facade grant, we should know what's going on, where we're putting our money before we go and spend it. Thank you. I don't know if anybody has the answer. Do you have the answer? Yeah. I, I cannot answer right. that for that's sure. That's my point. But I will, I will find yeah, out. Yeah, that's too late because the facade grant has already been voted on. Yeah, I, 
I, I, I understand that, and um, I, I will see what she's having. Okay. It's just, you know, I just think it's smart of us to be able to know what we're spending $19,000 on. Absolutely. Okay. What did you say? A light? If I could add, it's just, it, it's an improvement to that building overall, and that's, that's the main building. What, 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 what happens to the they're selling uh, unappropriate clothing in there or something? Well, it, you know, it has to be approved by no, know, the city on what that is. Now, if it's within the guidelines, I mean, they're giving Yeah, so. Right, there's nothing on the application. There's nothing on the application. It's a, I mean, I'm okay. I'm just, just trying to make a point. That's all. Thank you. 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 I'm going to put the can of in, didn't I? Thank you, sir. Okay, Vice Mayor. Uh, Vice Chair. You're on. <laughs> okay. Uh, two things real quick. Um, one, perhaps to um, satisfy this request, very curious, it's not something I wish for others. Um, maybe we need to have an, something extra on the application that says what type of business it is. Because in a nickel, I don't believe that, and we'll know. We'll know it's not what we're planning. Is that something that we could do? We can certainly add that to, as, as a piece of the line. Legally, can we do that? So. Legally, can we do that? Can we do that for you? Yeah. I, I can't uh, tell you, there are prohibitions in our program as to what it cannot be used for. So, for instance, if there's anything with abuses and that type of thing for our code or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, that is not allowed. It would be a violation and we could be in trouble. Okay. But, yeah, I, I, I get you. This is an important piece of information. I, I will apologize for this. This was kind of a tag team. This was actually initiated by Bill, and he brought it to me, and then it kind of got stuck for me to bring it to you. So it did have a break in communications, and I apologize. I had understood it was going to be some sort of a coffee shop type of thing, but I don't know for sure that it is. Yeah. And again, yeah. it's because yeah. there was a gap in the handle, um, and I apologize for that. Yeah, as long as we can find out what it is. Um, and the only other thing I was going to talk about was uh, the event on Saturday, which was lovely. And even though it was raining, there was still quite a bit of attendance. Um, and it was really nice to um, have memorial kick off this program in Dana Beach. Um, they're doing it in other cities as well, but it was just nice to see that they took it off there. And, and they did a really nice job. Got a whole bunch of people and um, had a lot of information for people and food and drink and the whole thing and stuff for the kids. And it was, a, it was a good day even though it was pouring rain. So it was really hot after that. So, but anyway, um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. And board member Jay, back to you. Thank you. I will I'm going to rescind my vote until I um, get more information. Um, board member Salvina made some very uh, legit uh, comments that I, I would like to have more information on before I, I say yes. So. Okay. Is there a motion on the prevailing side to reconsider the item so we can have the official vote? <laughs> okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right. I have a motion from uh, Board Member James to rescind the item to revote on it, and I have a second from Board Member Davis. So uh, we just call it to a roll. Uh, Elora? Well, this we can just do it. It's, it's, a, it's a motion to reconsider. So at this point... Well, so we'll just wait till we get more information. We, okay. I'm sorry. Let's make a vote to reconsider it, and mm -hmm. then you'll have the motion to rescind or, or to deny the application or whatever it is. Okay. All right, so I have a motion to second to reconsider it. All in favor? Well, yeah. Yeah, let's do a roll call for that. Board member James? No, yes, sir, James. This is to reconsider, correct? Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Board member Davis? Yeah. Yes. 
board member Jane Diaz, board member Charles Nelson, Mike Scalawan, Scalawan, Scal no. Now that we have a majority vote, do we consider the item? Is there a motion to place on the floor that you'd like to, to do? Board member Jane. Yes, I would like to make a motion to move this to the following meeting so that we can have more information and vote for it. Um, second from board member Salvino. All right, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, that passes and we'll uh, discuss this in the next meeting. All right, so my comments. Uh, it is great to see Memorial out there. From what I've heard of speaking with their board of directors and their CEO is, uh, you know, our city is very easy to work with. And it's great to set an example, um, you know, among the county of how we can have this partnership with, you know, one of the most important hospitals in our area. And it shows you how hospitals can work with uh, charities and cities come together and really make a difference in the community. And the, the health screening was great. Also, I know it's not, wasn't a part of the CRA, but it was still uh, it was a wonderful event. And we have a lot coming up with the CRA, with uh, the patch. We have a lot of decisions to be made. And I would like to thank Director Chen for his work on that. And I'd like to thank the Parks and Rec Department as well uh, for their work on uh, the event on Saturday as well. Did a bang up job, heard nothing but uh, positive feedback on that event. And with that, if you have no more comments, I'd say meeting is adjourned. Thank you.